up guys, welcome to another video. Today we're reviewing Friday the 13th Part 8 Jason Takes Manhattan. This one came out in 1989 and was directed by Rob Hedden and stars Kane Hodder and Scott Reeves. Now before we start, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and post notification bell so you can get a new video. And let's just start. Let's start talking about the good. So unfortunately for this film, there's no good about it. Now let's move on to the bad. So the shots and the editing for that opening sequence is terrible. The editing is horrific. Um, it looks like they just took a whole bunch of scenes, put them all together, and hoped for a good product. That opening sequence is terrible. And the shots are awful. They don't look like good shots. I don't even think they tried with that opening sequence to make an actual good shot and to make the cinematography um, good. It was just lazy um, cinematography, lazy shots, um, lazy camera angles for that opening sequence. Um, the opening sequence is also relevant to the plot. It has nothing to do with the story of the film, the plot of the film. There's nothing in this film that relates to that opening sequence, which is unfortunate because an opening sequence for a film should draw the audience into the film and want... Um, and want them to actually want to see the entire film. And this opening sequence does the opposite. It tries to make the audience not want to watch the film, unfortunately, but of course, I have to. Um, the characters in this film are usual throwaway characters from horror films. Um, nothing special, they're just random characters that are being chased and killed off by Jason. So you don't, you don't care about them because there's no character development and no character motivations for the characters for you to actually care about them. Um, the dialogue in this film is very cringeworthy. And that's unfortunate because, to be honest, a Friday the 13th film shouldn't have that much dialogue because it's just Jason, again, murdering people, which that's all this film is. There's no good dialogue. There's no story. It's just, again, Jason going after people on a boat. Um, the sequences in this film are very boring. There are a lot of boring sequences in this film. And with a film that's only, I think, an hour and 40 minutes, to have so many boring sequences in this film just makes it dreadful for the audience, which, of course, was me watching this film. And I barely got through this film. Um, the sequences in this film, there are a lot of ridiculous sequences. Number one, Jason punches a guy's head off, which makes no sense whatsoever because I guess you can argue that Jason is, well, he's not supernatural like Michael Myers, but he is a strong, um, horror villain. But it just got to the point where it was ridiculous because before he even punches that guy's head off, there are a whole bunch of ridiculous sequences before, so then when you actually get to this one, it's just another ridiculous sequence that you don't care about, and it's kind of annoying. Um, there is a disgusting sequence in the second act of the film, which um, I didn't think needed to be in the film at all. It did not drive the plot whatsoever. It wasn't even a good character moment. It's just a random sequence that they put into this film. Because a lot of films in the 80s, you know, especially those horror films, those bad horror films, have those sequences in there, which it didn't even drive the plot for the film. Um, the third act of the film is terrible. One of the worst third acts that I've ever seen in any horror film, just because of how boring it was and how non-entertaining it was. The third act of the film should be this big final battle or um, culmination of all the events that take place in a film. And unfortunately, the third act is terrible, and it's not, it's not interesting, it's not entertaining, and it's not fun. It's just a random third act um, that, of course, is going to have Jason fighting someone, but you start, to get, um, you start to get sick of those ending sequences because all the Friday the 13th films are sort of like that. But the difference between this one and some of the other ones were that they had interesting characters, so you actually cared whether they lived or died. But in this film, since you don't care about the characters, you don't care whether they live or die, and you want to see a good fight sequence, but unfortunately, it doesn't even have that. Um, the ending sequence is terrible. I did not like the ending sequence. 
Um, again, it's just a random ending sequence that, for me, doesn't make sense and shouldn't have been put in this film at all. Um, that's about it. Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan is a terrible horror film. Definitely one of the worst horror films that I've ever seen. And I highly recommend that you do not check this one out. And I'm going to give Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, an F. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and post notification bell so you can know if you're a video. I'm Peter. Thanks for watching.